Welcome back to storyboarding. In this chapter, we're going to go over the basic shot types and show you how to get started with your first storyboard panels. To kick things off, we're going to quickly review what we learned in the last chapter. If you'll recall, a film can be broken down into a few subsections. At the top, we have our sequences, which can be broken down into scenes which can be further broken down into shots. For this tutorial, we're going to be working at the level of the shot. Each panel we will be creating is going to represent a shot in its entirety or a smaller subsection of the shot. So throughout this tutorial, there might be times when I'm interchanging the terms shot and panel, so just be aware. Now, Let's go over the different shot types. Along your journeys, I'm sure you've come across terms such as establishing shot, action shot, close-up, medium, and wide-angle shots. The function and the purpose of all these terms is simply to give us an easy way of describing and categorizing what it is that we're drawing in the panel or seeing in a particular shot. Now, suppose our story is about mitochondrial fission. What would an establishing shot look like? Well, the purpose of an establishing shot is much like its name implies. It's here to help establish the time and the space in which the actions will be occurring. So generally, these types of shots precede or kickstart new scenes or new sequences. What we're establishing here is the cytoplasm where the mitochondria are residing. So I'm drawing those out and then now here is the nucleus and some of the pores and I'm going to draw out the Golgi and the ER. And again what we're doing is making sure that the viewer knows where they're going to be for the rest of the scene. And that's because the shots that follow or precede this particular panel may not necessarily provide that information. We might jump in and out closer or further away from the action and this can be disorienting to the viewer if they weren't properly oriented to begin with. So here I'm drawing in a few more things like the skeletal structures. And this is what an establishing shot for our story might look like. Now let's move on to an action shot. An action shot is, again, like its name implies, we're going to so show some action. And for us, that's going to be the fission process. So here is a mitochondrion, or soon to be mitochondria. And these are the proteins that are going to be involved in the fission process. And I'll just faintly outline a bit of the internal membrane here, just with a, not too much detail. And then some blobby structures over here, just to give it some depth. And there we go. So another term we can use to describe this shot is to call this a wide angle shot. A wide angle shot simply captures the entirety of a primary character within the frame of the camera. So the mitochondria here takes up much of the central position and around the periphery of the shot we can see a lot of the setting. Now opposite the wide angle is our close-up. 
A close-up shot is one where we are so far zoomed in to the main action or our primary character that most of it falls off screen. So why would we choose to use such a shot? Well, we are close up because we want to focus on to a particular feature. In real life or live action, this often means we're focusing in on the eyes or the emotions of a particular character. Here, we're focusing in on these proteins which are involved in the fission process. And you'll also notice that the environment, which I'm going to shade here, is occupying such a small amount of space that it's hard to see what's happening in the background. And in post-production, moreover, this may be depth blurred. And this presents us with a really good reason for having had a good establishing shot. If we hadn't used one, and we had started with this close-up, the viewers may not have known what we, they were looking at, or where we were within the cytoplasm. And at the same time, we need our close-ups because we cannot run a film or animation just at the level of an establishing shot because we wouldn't be able to focus in on all those molecular features that are so crucial to the story. Now, as you probably gathered, shot types are very fluid in nature. For example, a medium shot is simply in between a wide angle and close-up. You could also have an extreme wide angle or an extreme close-up. And shot types are definitely not mutually exclusive. An establishing shot can easily have action within it. What's important to remember is not to have shot types bog you down to the point where it's dictating what it is you're drawing. You should let the content and the storytelling drive the shots that you need. Now, at this point, I would say we have three pretty solid panels. Of course, if we're feeding this into a real storyboard, we would probably clean up the lines and add some more details. But we're done for now. If we're to pass these along to the production team, I'd say they'd have a pretty good sense of the characters and the setting assets that they will need to create. What isn't so clear is perhaps the information on action and movement. So to show you guys how to convey that information, we're going to move on to a new story.